What's up guys, so go back to episode 12 of my Juventus Master League on Pass 2021. If you missed out on the last episode, make sure to go and check it out before I watch this one. And there's been so many comments saying, why did you sell Ronaldo? Guys, I might have actually made a massive mistake here. I mean, there was like a 50-50 in the comment section. Some people uh, liked that I sold them and, you know, it was fine. But uh, a lot of people as well got quite annoyed uh, that he left the club. So I'm sorry about that. But uh, hopefully we'll have to uh, continue and, uh, you know, try to keep winning games and titles. Even without Ronaldo, that is the challenge uh, for this series moving forward. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to start off this episode by trying to sign Erling Haaland. Of course, a lot of you did tell me which players I should sign. I saw quite a few people say a Felix, I saw some people as well uh, say Neymar again, but uh, most people did indeed say Holland. That is pretty much the perfect replacement. Holland is goals. He will get you goals, and uh, that is exactly as well what Ronaldo did. And uh, you know, he's got quite a lot to live up to now, and uh, it's not going to be easy to replace Ronaldo. I don't think anybody could really do that, uh, but I think that with Holland, especially with how young he is as well, his potential, I think he's got a big future at the club, and he can also help us get uh, quite a few goals and stuff. So uh, yeah, we'll just send him this offer. See if they're doing it accepted or not 99 million is a lot of money uh, but uh, we'll see what happens and of course if they accept it then that would be perfect we also have a Felipe Coutinho right here of course the new signing from the last episode uh, his default a, a center attack midfielder or a classic number 10 I'm gonna change his uh, training settings right here uh, to a roaming flank so he's gonna get more curl on his shots he's also gonna get uh, you know a bit better finishing as well uh, to cut inside you know do that the fake shot that he always does and the signature Coutinho curved shot is exactly what I need there on the left uh, flank so uh, that is uh, where Coutinho is going to be playing and uh, yeah you also told me to go ahead and retire the number 7 and you know what I'm going to do that he was so good for us Ronaldo nobody is ever going to get to number 7 anymore as long as I uh, at least I'm a manager of this football club so yeah to honor Ronaldo there and what he did for us especially in that the last game uh, yeah he's going to yeah he get, get his number retired and um, nobody is, is going to be wearing it again uh, so now we go into the first game of the season this is in the Serie A, this is where everything sort of begins, we obviously won the Super Cup in the last episode, and also the uh, Cup against uh, Napoli in that uh, final as well, so we have uh, quite a good momentum going into the season I would say, and uh, the fans are excited to see the players walk out, of course, uh, no Ronaldo, this is the first game without Cristiano Ronaldo so we're gonna see how we do, of course we're starting up with uh, Mason Greenwood up front, um, to replace Ronaldo in this match, we also of course have Kulusevski Martin Rodrigo, a bit on fire recently as well, uh, so hopefully they can step up in this one and give us the three points here we can see Roma squad as well they've got some great players here it's not gonna be easy they did do pretty well last season so yeah hopefully we can just start off with three points that would be uh, the best but here we go Kulusevski finds him Mason Greenwood with a very nice uh, through ball Greenwood keeps going as well tight angle here but he manages to uh, put it in what a goal by Mason Greenwood maybe we don't need Erling Haaland after all take a look at this by Kulusevski though no, beautiful pass and to the people said in the last episode that uh, Kulusevski Kulusevski was just a one season wonder, there he is with a beautiful pass into Greenwood, but, but of course he has to score that one as well, it is a difficult, um, you know, angle to score from, but uh, luckily Mason Greenwood is uh, just as good with his right or left, and you know, he doesn't play too much for us uh, yet at least, but it's nice to see whenever he does any play, he always does uh, perform really well, so we go into the first half with a 1-0 lead, Coutinho also comes on in the second half here, he's gonna make a stay with the last few minutes of this match, not much has really happened in this game, but but hopefully now uh, we're gonna be able to get these three points that's the most important thing but here comes Sheko and he's been able to score in the very last few seconds of the match this is absolutely not good and uh, after such a boring game this is how it ends we don't even get the three points look at this we're just the two passive looking around the players not being aggressive enough to get this ball and of course this is super disappointing and it looks like we might just start with just a point in the in the start of the season uh, which is uh, which is worse and this is you know without Ronaldo as well the players are not looking like themselves I have to say that and the check over there gets one last chance and one goal that was basically uh, yeah each chance the both teams had in the whole match and uh, both the teams to score so that is not uh, the best start to the season I have to say Inter also win their game so uh, yeah not the best guys we're down to eighth place here on uh, on our one point and uh, of course, it is still early, uh, everything can still happen, but still not a great start to this season. Uh, not just the fact that we drew the game, uh, but we didn't really create much, so we have to improve from that and uh, keep up uh, even without Ronaldo. I mean, it is still crazy that he's not even at the club. I almost can't believe it, but, um, you know, uh, we'll have to try to do our best without him. That's the only thing we can do right now. We cannot go back, so... 
Yeah, we'll have to do uh, the best out of this situation, but the negotiations with Erling Haaland has gone down well. As you can see, the club wants 104 million uh, pounds, which is a lot of money, but I'm gonna go ahead and accept it. We have pretty much no other option at the moment, and, uh, you know, it's not too long even until the transfer window closes, so let's just get this over the line. Now, Erling Haaland is going to be joining Juventus, and uh, hopefully that's gonna be a, a great signing for us. I mean, it's been amazing at the Borussia Dortmund after coming from Salzburg. Even in Norway, he was banging in goals like crazy at the age of like 17 or something. And now he is in the Serie A as well, which I would say is on so some sort of a similar level as the Bundesliga. Um, so I think that, you know, just going to keep going. He, he has no plans of stopping uh, scoring goals. And of course, his records in the Champions League as well is unbelievable. So this guy needs a Champions League trophy. Hopefully, we can do the double and bring in that to this season. But as you guys can see uh, right here, he is uh, talking to the players, uh, I mean, to the fans. And everybody joining the club. So that is nice to see. He joins up with his new teammates. I'm here to try to take this team to the next level. I know what's expected of me. He's going to be getting the number 9 as well. The exact same number he had at uh, Boris Dortmund. And of course, number 9 is the perfect one for him. So there we go. He takes over from Morata's number. And we have a brand new number 9. A brand new striker in this uh, team. So I'm super excited about that. Drop a like if you guys uh, liked that uh, transfer. We can see that Cristiano Ronaldo has also won Euro a best player of the season award and uh, this is from the last season when he was playing with us of course he did score a Champions League final hat-trick so this is not really a surprise that he wins it as you guys can see this was from the 2020-2021 season so it also counts that he was playing for Juventus there not Wolverhampton so I'm happy that uh, yeah he received that the trophy the groups as well for the new Champions League season has been drawn let's take a look and see who do we have in our group we have Barcelona Marseille and Schopenhauer that is a tough group especially Barcelona is gonna be a, such a cool team to have in the group stages of course we did indeed face them in the semi-finals last uh, season uh, where we did indeed beat them after a crazy late free kick from Ronaldo but it's nice that we're gonna be facing Messi and the players in the group stage as well uh, we can see the next one Ajax Chelsea Roma that is also a very tough uh, you know group there with the three uh, very nice teams so that's gonna be a tough for every single one uh, Porto Arsenal is actually in the Champions League and also Real Sociedad they have also been doing really well in Spain so and that is a very interesting group right there but of course Arsenal uh, should be able to make it out uh, then group B is Real Madrid and Liverpool so uh, from this one we can pretty much already uh, yeah, see that Real Madrid and Liverpool is gonna make it out of this one unless anything is shocking really happens PSG Napoli and Dortmund okay that might be the group of death right there look at that group PSG Napoli and Dortmund that is three absolutely crazy teams in the same group and Inter gets a very easy one here with Ol Olympiacos fine Nord and of course it's shocked to the next but uh, yeah this uh, this is absolutely insane some really nice groups here Bayern once again gets an easy group I mean every single year Bayern seems to be getting pretty easy groups in my opinion but uh, yeah they get Zenit and Celtic so we'll see who makes it out of that one and then we also have Manchester City and Atletico Madrid uh, which also has a pretty uh, you know decent group right there so some very interesting ones we have a bit of a tough one Barcelona Marseille and Schopenhauer but of course the main a uh, group of death is uh, Kylian Mbappe he's also already talked about uh, that so that was uh, pretty crazy but now we go into the second match of the season this is now very important we have to win this match because uh, you know if we fall too far behind or something then you never know what's gonna happen Inter only finished two points behind us in the league last year so I do not want to mess it up again now and of course this is the debut match of Holland so all the cameras and focus is on him and we have to win this one. Let's get the three points. Uh, Diaby now finds Alexandro on the overlap. Crosses it in uh, to Erling Haaland. And it falls to Pentakur there with a nice attempt. Uh, but the keeper makes a great save from the corner kick. Though it lands to Haaland. And look at that. Imagine if it scored like a sideways bicycle kick or something in his debut match. That would have been unbelievable. But he gets a very close now to the first uh, goal. Some Tori now though on the ball. Let's see if they can do something. Gabbiadini turns the licked. But it's a nice save by our new goalkeeper Perrin, who is now back from long. The Ligt heads the ball out and uh, they falls to them, but the shot is just over the goal. Could have once again been uh, quite dangerous there. So it's been uh, quite a few chances for both teams in the first half, but uh, no goals yet. We still have to uh, try looking for it. The DRB on the ball now on a bit of a run there. Goes past one, two, uh, three players 
now, but he's not able to get off the shot, sadly. Uh, but uh, still some nice involvements there by Diaby. Time is taking now, 70 minutes on the clock. Ødegård to Diaby. Diaby finds Erling Haaland with the first shot of the match on target. And he gets the goal, Erling Haaland, in his debut match. With his first goal for Juventus, that is absolutely incredible. Look at this, I think it is Ødegård as well being involved in this attack. The Norwegian connection, Ødegård and Erling Haaland. Uh, that is absolutely beautiful. Common easy finish there from Haaland. Look like a bit of a goal that uh, Ronaldo would also score for us. But that is beautiful. Goes the opposite way of the keeper. And uh, Haaland makes it 1-0. He also gets subbed out now as well because he needs to be rested. It's only his first game and he's played quite a bit. And now comes Sabdori though for the first chance of the second half. Some quick passes here. And he's able to turn. Get off a shot. And they have actually scored after we just uh, made it 1-0. It is now 1-1 after 77 minutes. We're able to mess it up once again towards the end of the match. Uh, as you can see, we're not able to clear the ball well enough off the pitch. And uh, yeah, a couple of quick passes from them. And they're able to get this goal. Nice turn there around Alaba. Not great defending by him. And of course, the pair will not really able to uh, save that shot. That is way too, way too close to the goal. And yeah, the mentality of this team has uh, been uh, dropping a lot since Ronaldo left. This has now happened in two games in a row where we're up 1-0 towards the end of the match and not able to hold on to that lead. But there is still time in this match to get one goal back but we do not have too much uh, more minutes left in this match. Now Bellerin uh, picks up the ball and maybe one last chance here uh, with Kulusevski finding Mason Greenwood who keeps going now. I see Coutinho up there as well. Mason Greenwood with a pass over to Felipe Coutinho and he also gets a goal in his second game for Juventus. Felipe Coutinho, the new signings with both goals in this match. Beautiful run here by Coutinho and look at this by Kulusevski once again to Greenwood. That is a very nice co connection and Greenwood once again being involved in yet another goal even though it doesn't play too much for us. Just to take a look at that pass. It is beautiful and Coutinho there on his left foot. Of course he still has to score it. Uh, he almost uh, yeah, he almost messes it up. He falls over like crazy but He's able to put it in, which is amazing. And now, let's not mess it up now. Uh, it looks like they might be getting one last chance in this match. It's a nice ball over to this player who shoots it. But the Perrin makes a nice and easy save. And we win the game at 2-1. And luckily, we're able to win it. It looked like we were going to be able to draw it again. But uh, Erling Haaland, they've been a man of the match. He gets a goal. Uh, and of course, uh, yeah, Coutinho as well, which is absolutely amazing. Exactly what we needed. Uh, just uh, not the most convincing win ever, of course. We had quite a few more chances in the first game, but still, uh, still not too convincing. We're now number two in the table as well, with Inter having won uh, both of their first games. Once again, if you have missed out, uh, this league does not do goal difference. It's head to head results that counts in this one. So if we end up with the same amount of points as Inter or something at the end of the season, we have have to have some good results against them uh, but Coutinho is happy about that he is making the press and everything we're also going to take a look at some of the stats from the first month and as you can see the league is on another level 41 tackles 1 and 14 aerial battles as well so the league is doing really well of course he is our captain as well for the season uh, Chiellini is not going to be playing too much uh, his last year was uh, you know good for us but he made a few mistakes and sometimes he looked uh, quite slow against uh, some of the younger players at least like Mbappe or something absolutely destroyed Chiellini so uh, yeah it's not uh, gonna be playing too much Chiellini but of course he will be getting some minutes as well in in some games when we have to rotate and uh, things like that but uh, Arthur as well Real Madrid wanted to pay like uh, 58 million or something but of course uh, we're not gonna be letting him go he is uh, amazing for us really good player and uh, yeah he is now set to Lazio Juventus after joining from uh, Barcelona uh, so he is uh, pretty happy here and uh, not going to be going anywhere David Alaba here to be transferred he says that I've heard rumors that there's been an offer for me it's all very flattering if it's true so I don't like the fact that the Alaba is working for United that is not good I almost wanted to sell him right there but of course Alaba has been good for us and um, you know 51 million that is still a lot more uh, than I think that I bought him for I cannot really remember how much I got him for but I think it was like 40 million maybe 30 million or something maybe even less than that and uh, now already his value has gone up so much after joining Juventus and winning that the Champions League and everything so uh, yeah 51 million was a nice offer 
offer, but um, yeah, Alaba is going to be staying at the club. He is very important to us, of course. Demi Ral as well, up and coming player. He also has been uh, pretty, pretty, pretty decent for us. He's made a couple of mistakes, but still very young, and I think that uh, yeah, he's also got a pretty big future in the club. Another offer now for Alaba. This one is from Chelsea, so once again another Premier League club. But look at this, 91 million. What is Chelsea doing, Abramovic? Is uh, going crazy again. Uh, Chelsea and transfer windows. That is one of the craziest things that we're gonna be able to see. And uh, 91 million. How? How? Mu I, I don't even know. Are they? Uh, are they? Are, are they good over in London? I, I completely do not understand. 91 million. That is 40 more million than what United offered. And of course, I, I cannot uh, decline that. 91 million for for Alaba, who's like 30 years old. Uh, it's just crazy. I, I cannot believe that his market value is like. Like 50 million or something and they offer 90 million so yeah guys we have actually lost out on all about now but of course we got so much money uh, so yeah we can pretty much sign anybody that we want and um, so he was only at the club for like a year pretty sad to see him go but once again though I don't think many people is declining 91 million that is a crazy offer one of the craziest uh, offers or fees I've ever seen in my life and of course and now that he's left Chiellini cannot leave even though Tottenham wanted to get him even after the uh, iconic it's the, in the history of the Tottenham interview that he made so I don't understand why Spurs wanted him but of course the Chiellini will have to stay now at the club and now what I pretty much did I went ahead and uh, played the release clause of uh, Rafael Raran because now we have once again so much money that we can do whatever we want we can buy whichever center back we want so why not just go out and buy one of the best ones in this game and in the world we're gonna pay his release clause there of 105 million so Real Madrid cannot say anything about this. It is all down to the player if he wants to join or not. Uh, so that is just amazing. All about and hopefully Baran uh, comes in. He's gonna get, you know, quite a lot uh, per week as well. He's on crazy contracts with Real Madrid. So we want to make him a nice offer and see if he wants to join Juventus. And uh, yeah, release close there as well off of 116 million. A uh, three-year contract. That would be great. And yeah, we're also gonna give him a couple of uh, bonuses, I believe. Maybe a, a clean sheet option, of course, if he gets a clean sheet he deserves a bit of extra bonuses we like having some bonuses that sometimes can motivate the players as well uh, but I'm happy about that offer we're gonna go ahead and send that and uh, hopefully they do need to accept it guys we literally played the release close off of around once again 100 million pounds we're making some massive signings massive expensive signings in this episode only three hours left now off the transfer window and as you can see Varan has said yes he wants to join he has accepted our offer uh, which means that he's gonna be joining up with Juventus. Real Madrid cannot do anything about this because I did indeed pay the full release clause so it's just about the player if he wants to uh, try out something new in his career and after winning literally everything at Real Madrid multiple times he is now at Juventus for the next chapter in his career as well of course in my opinion uh, probably at least the top three top five center backs in the world uh, so they said uh, this could be amazing what a massive signing it is and I would also say that this is an upgrade from Alaba and we only paid like uh, you know 10 million for this guy if you think about it after that uh, Alaba transfer so that was just crazy he's now you know signing his contract and uh, being introduced to the media so uh, two 100 million plus signings in this episode let's go crazy and go for 1500 likes on this one as well that would be amazing and support on every single episode as I said has been amazing and that's the reason I'm still opposing this series you know I absolutely love recording it but if nobody would watch it uh, then I wouldn't be uploading this to YouTube still but you know after 12 episodes the support is still absolutely crazy it just gets better and better after every single one so yeah just hopefully uh, let's keep it up and uh, yeah just continue like that and this could literally last for many seasons uh, Rob Ron is now number six as well which is great uh, he obviously is gonna get the number from uh, Alaba and uh, yeah he is happy about that of course so doing some interviews and stuff with the club right now and of course this guy is gonna make his debut in his first match he is going straight into this team and no questions asked about that so the transfer window is now closed we're gonna have a look at some of the transfers but a lot of things have happened in this summer of course Ronaldo has come to Wolverhampton that is one of the biggest shocks in the transfer window and uh, you know nobody really expected him uh, to leave Juventus even after winning it or being in the Champions League and the league and we can see that uh, of course uh, 
Varane has gone here, Holland has come here, Alaba has left, Ronaldo left, uh, Raul Jimenez has gone to Arsenal, Everton has gone from uh, Benfica to Barcelona, David Blin has gone to Liverpool, that is also a bit interesting, and of course Chesney as well has indeed gone to Spain. So a couple of interesting and a lot of transfers, a very, uh, you know, a very exciting transfer, I have to say, uh, one of the best ones of recent years I can think of, and we can see that Mason Greenwood and of course Alexander as well has made the first the team of the month, uh, Mason Greenwood of course, the two goal moments in two matches, even though he hasn't played too much for us, so I'm very happy about what he's done for us, and now we got international games coming up as well, the first couple of games with England as manager, I'm really excited about this, of course we did get this job offer in the last episode, uh, after my amazing season with Juventus, we got offers from uh, Argentina, we got offers from Mexico, and of course England as well, one of the main reasons I went with England is because our manager that we're using is Steven Gerrard, and he's English, so it obviously makes sense, but at the same time they also have their home stadium on the game, Wembley is in PES 2021, and it looks absolutely incredible, uh, so that obviously makes it more special, we are using Juventus, they have their home stadium, and of course now England as well with their home stadium, so that is just a perfect match, and as you guys can see, it just looks absolutely incredible here, uh, so I'm really excited to get to know these players now, first couple of games with them, and we also might be having a World Cup as well at the end of the season, where it's really going to compete in, so that would be incredible, but uh, now I'm really just excited to see how it's going to go down, because uh, yeah, the, you know, we haven't uh, really managed any of these players before, we can see Jaden Sancho, Madison Kane, Sterling, Henderson, Maguire, Gomez, Trent, Pickford, you know, there's so many new players there, so I'm really excited to see how they're going to do, uh, France is also looking pretty strong, we have Mbappe, Martial, Lemar, Pogba, Maximin, of course, Rabiot as well, uh, that's a player that I know from uh, Juventus, but uh, their squad is looking nice, of course, Varane as well, which we didn't decide, so we'll see how it does, but uh, let's get into it, uh, Madison now with a beautiful pass over to Sancho, almost there for Jaden Sancho, but look at that pass by James Madison, of course, if some of these players might perform well, I might even sign them for uh, Juventus, you never know, but uh, here come France, Mbappe, uh, it ends up to Marcial there, who hits the post, and that is it for the first half, a couple of uh, massive chances there to each team, but uh, still no goal, of course, a hurricane on the ball now, amazing playmaker, good with his feet as well, he can do anything, uh, he goes past Rabiot there, finds Sancho, Sancho gives it to Declan Rice, but their keeper comes out quickly, and it makes a very nice save there, but we're playing some very good football for it to be my first game with England. James Munn is now over to Raheem Sterling. Does a nice fake shot. Ends up to Harry Kane, surely. But the keeper, Lloris, comes out again. What a game he is having in this match. James Munn is now once again chips it over to Raheem Sterling. What a ball. But it's right uh, at uh, Lloris there again from Sterling. So uh, we need to improve this finishing. Or maybe Lloris is just uh, absolutely incredible in this match. Uh, but now Mbappe, look at this linking up. And Lamar gets the ball back. That was incredible football there by France as well. But the game ends somehow 1-1. And I mean, both teams should have had the goals. We should have probably had a couple of goals in this match. And yeah, maybe even won it. But I mean, a draw against France isn't too bad. You can see that Lloris gets the man of the match. Which was very disturbed in that match. Because um, yeah, he made some unbelievable saves. And uh, yeah, stopped the Kane from getting a couple goals there. But we keep going now. We have another one coming up straight after against Belgium. Which also is going to be another massive challenge. I mean, France and Belgium... So of the best international teams in the world. I'm gonna start with the same 11 here, but I'm also gonna play Sancho and Sterling a bit further up in the pitch, and I'm gonna try to play a bit more attacking football, and I'm also gonna try to make some subs as well later in this match, but now it's all about finding my strongest 11, and uh, you know, see who I can potentially, uh, you know, if I do not like anybody, sub out, uh, bring someone else in, promote somebody else, maybe Folden or something. I saw a few people uh, tell me to get him in, so maybe that for next time, uh, but I need to just get to know my players a bit there now. Uh, but look at this from James Madison runs past the whole defense, keeps going on his left foot, hits the crossbar. What a player James Madison has been for England so far. He's been one of my favorites. Here he comes again, sends it to Jaden Sancho now, and he's gonna shoot. What a goal by Jaden Sancho, scores the first goal for England under Steven Gerrard as a manager, and that was amazing football. Look at this. This is Steven Gerrard football at its best. 
and uh, James Madison there into Sancho with a beautiful touch and the finish is even better and uh, it is absolutely incredible. We're up 1-0 against the Belgium now. Keeper of course has absolutely no chance with that. Rocket from Sancho and a great start to this match but now come Belgium. Lukaku there gets off a shot. Luckily though it was with his right foot so wasn't the best finish uh, but here is James Madison again. Look at that fake shot. Over to Declan Rice who gives it to Sancho. He's going to cross it into Harry Kane but they're able to clear that one but what a half it's been some amazing chances and we're playing some really nice attractive football but it's a Belgium that gets the best start there in the second half and uh, they just uh, keep passing it around the trying to find a way through and uh, we're not really able to get the ball there Declan Rice not able to get the ball Nangola now over with an amazing pass and look at that what a finish and they just played it around there for such a long time so many passes before that the goal went in and I mean the shot is just absolutely incredible let's take a look at this I think it is Van Naken who got the goal but nine goal on there with a nice pass and I think it is Harry Maguire who doesn't get there quick enough but uh, just a great football there by Belgium to just, uh, yeah, stay uh, patient and calm and just play through us there. And, uh, yeah, that finish, Pickford has, of course, absolutely no chance with that. But uh, we keep going, trying to look for the next goal. Declan Rice now over to James Madison. Nice touch. But on his left foot, the finish isn't the best. We should be once again doing better there. And Madison should be getting that on target. Uh, but what a game he's having. He's involved in literally everything. Uh, but now Belgium playing it around. Harry Kane though steals the ball here. Shoots with his left foot as well. Uh, but we hit the uh, crossbar very close by Harry Kane. And now Raheem Sterling tries to cross it in. But he gets tackled uh, by Hossard. Who actually doesn't it end up receiving a yellow card. We'll take a look at this replay. But uh, yeah, that is very late by Eden Hossard. Start, and it looked like uh, Sterling got the pretty hurt there, but he seems okay. Uh, but once again, 74 minutes, a lot of chances in this match. We're still looking for that winner. James Mann is now on the ball. Anything can happen when he's on it. And he crosses it over to Harry Kane. And we get the second goal of the match. And of course, it is the captain as well, Harry Kane, with the amazing finish. When you give Harry Kane those chances in the box... He is going to be scoring it and once again who is the provider here it is uh, James Madison what a player he has been in these uh, two games for England he has been the man of the match for me uh, in both of them and yeah Harry Kane just scores there gets a bit lucky the keeper's not able to save it but uh, very nice and we also sub in a couple of players Minx and Rashford to get the last a few minutes in this match Mertens now on the ball though and he's dangerous he does a nice fake shot over to Lukaku but Lukaku does not hit the target and that is how the game is going to be ending. We actually end up winning the second game 2-1 against Belgium. Both of them at Wembley and I have to say both of the games we did play some amazing football so I'm very excited about this. I'm excited about the future of this national team and yeah especially if we have a World Cup coming up at the end of the season I have a feeling that we can go pretty far but for the first couple of international games I think we did a pretty nice job but let me know in the comment section down below uh, how you guys think we did but now we have the Champions League as well coming up again with our club team Juventus and I'm really excited about this as well we've got some amazing uh, games coming up now and especially this one in the Champions League against the Sheven Hall away uh, we've got a really tough group of course Barcelona is there I believe Marseille is also there so we have to win this game uh, to have a chance of uh, you know getting out of this group I think it is going to be very difficult but I'm excited to see some of the debut uh, players as well of course Varane is going to get his first match for us Holland is going to get his first uh, Champions League match for us and uh, the same goes for Philippe Coutinho, uh, but we also have an offer of Bernadeschi, Valencia wants to sign him, but uh, you know, Bernadeschi still has a place in our squad, especially now if any of our front three gets injured, then uh, he is one of the contenders there to take over for them, and yeah, he's, he's still probably gonna play some matches and you know, come off the bench and stuff, so for now we're not gonna be selling Bernadeschi, I know that he's not really played too much for us, and I've seen a few comments as well about it, uh, saying that this guy doesn't need to serve more playing time, so I'm gonna try my best uh, to give him some more minutes, but now we have so many up there we know we have Greenwood we have Holland uh, we have Diaby as well and of course Kulusevski is playing in the same position so Kulusevski is super good for us uh, so it's gonna take quite a long uh, quite a lot for him to be replaced but I mean Bernadeschi uh, still has a place in the squad and uh, yeah we'll try to give him some more minutes but uh, here we are now in Denmark and this is gonna be tough this is a difficult team to face especially away and uh, they did come pretty far last year in the Europa League so we'll see how we do but uh, the away fans is here uh, massive thank you to everyone 
everybody that uh, took uh, the uh, time to, uh, you know, come over here uh, in this away match. Uh, I recognize some of these players from their squad, but uh, some, you know, most of them are indeed pretty unfamiliar. So I'm not really too sure what to expect here. Uh, so we'll see how this uh, match goes down. But it's a Schopenhauer with the first chance. We run around there with a beautiful block. Of course, this is his first match, and uh, that was a nice involvement. Alexandro now down to Felipe Coutinho, and he is good with his feet. He is going to be doing some dribbling here. Take the ball forward, uh, but it brings it back here into Martin Odegaard, who's going to send it to Alexandro Arthur now. Some very nice passes. Uh, Kulusevski on the ball with a nice fake shot. Sends it to Martin Odegaard with the chip over to Kulusevski again, but it lands to Arthur, who goes for the long shot. That could have been very spectacular if he went in. But their keeper makes a nice save. Uh, but here comes Schopenhauer right after Fischer there with a nice shot. But uh, our new keeper, Perrin, makes a very nice save. Martin Odegaard now to Bentacure. Finds Felipe Coutinho. He's looking for Erling Haaland as well. Can he get a back-to-back -back goal? He gets tackled here in a very good position. Erling Haaland. And, uh, you know, Martin Odegaard is going to be taking this free kick. We have a chance here of going in front. Martin Odegaard steps up and look at that. It is beautiful from him and of course uh, I'm not too sure how many freaky goals he's actually scored for us I know that he's actually been very close to them he's sitting on the crossbar a couple of times uh, but this might be his first freaky goal for the club so that was absolutely perfect a world class there uh, by Martin Ödegård uh, Arthur now over to Kulusevski linking up here with Erling Haaland I'm liking this but uh, Kulusevski what is up with this guy these days I mean he's not really looking like himself so he's doing weird things I don't think he has even scored so far in this whole episode so, uh, yeah, a few people did indeed call this guy a uh, yeah, one-season wonder. I think it is still early to call him that. But look at this chance by uh, Schopenhauer. They get super close now. They probably should have had a goal in this match. But, uh, yeah, Kulusevski not really on form these days. Do you guys think he's a one-season wonder? Let me know in the comment section. But here comes Diaby. Amazing pace, but it's literally straight at him. Uh, Ari Ramsilo picks up the second ball. But the finish is absolutely awful. Should be getting that on target. But somehow we're able to come away uh, this ground with a scrappy 1-0 win. It was not convincing. It was not great football. But, uh, you know, we got the win. And that's the most important thing in the Champions League. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. And we can see some other really interesting results. Uh, City, of course, they won a 3-1. Bayern München won. Celtic lost a 2-0 at home. And Liverpool has drawn at home to Club Brugge. Real Madrid has lost to Sporting. And, uh, you know, Borussia Dortmund as well has lost to Napoli. Inter won 4 4 nil. Uh, but considering, you know, it's the first match and, you know, players are just back from international break, I'm actually pretty happy with that 1-0 win. Uh, so I'm not going to complain about that. Uh, but uh, Kulusevski, one of the worst players on that pitch in that game. And uh, I just don't know what's going on with him these days. Maybe he's feeling the pressure now since he scored so many goals last season. Maybe he's starting to feel so much pressure and, uh, you know, perform a bit worse. I don't know. But, uh, you know, he's still young and I'm sure that he's going to turn up eventually uh, this season for us. So that is what he did last year. He was one of the main reasons we won the Champions League, won the league and everything. So, uh, yeah, hopefully he is uh, he's feeling fine. Uh, here he is on the ball, though, looking nice there with a nice uh, fake shot. Uh, sends it to our run. This is amazing football. Ramsey over to Erling Haaland. Takes a touch and look at that by Erling Haaland. Gets the second goal in two league games for us. And uh, Haaland, he is going to get two goals. And that is exactly why we signed him right there. That, that looked like something Ronaldo would do. Look at that touch there by Erling Haaland. One touch there takes it, I think, through the legs of the defender. Nice assist there by Ramsey. But, of course, Erling Haaland had to do everything there. And, of course, when he shoots the ball, it is most of the time going to be going into the back of the net. So, I'm very happy about what I've seen from uh, Erling Haaland so far in his uh, Juventus career. I think it ended up being an amazing signing. And, of course, Barbara as well has kept uh, you know at least one clean sheet so far maybe another one in this match uh, but their keeper messes it up here Diaby on the rebound but uh, that is not good enough to uh, go in uh, but let's see can we get one more goal in this match Diaby now on the run again he's gonna keep the ball here got a lot of pace going past a couple of players they're still going Diaby and look at that hits the crossbar or the posts and uh, super unlucky by Diaby he's had a couple of those amazing runs 
Uh, but he's not able to get the goal. Uh, his finishing isn't really the best. That is the one problem with the RB. Everything else is good. Dribbling pace, but his finishing is what's lacking. But uh, he gets super close there. Erling Holland, no man of the match. And of course, the Var Run keeps the athletic clean sheet in these uh, two first matches for him. So I'm happy about our signing so far. I think they have uh, paid off uh, almost already. But of course, uh, Erling Holland uh, has uh, really settled nicely, of course. It takes some time, you know, for players to, uh, to settle into a brand new league, a brand new place brand new country but Erling Holland is just bringing in the goals uh, which I'm happy about so yeah we're now sixth in the table of course still very early uh, it is still super close and too uh, early to really call anything but of course we're gonna be one of the teams a part of this the title race uh, of course this season so I'm just uh, yeah going to try to uh, do everything to win this the second league title two years in a row and of course uh, we're gonna go all out uh, for the Champions League as well and see if we can do a crazy back-to-back -back. but uh, Alexandro we have an offer here from Spain but of course once again this this guy is not going to be sold. He is still very important to us. He plays literally almost every single game, especially now that the Alaba has left. Uh, you know, Alaba sometimes played left back for us, but now Alexandro, he is uh, definitely going to be staying at this uh, club and he's happy here. Uh, but we have to decide our next uh, international squad too. And uh, I saw so many people tell me to bring in Phil Foden. I saw a few other comments as well about maybe Harvey Barnes, you know. There's a few other players that we could also bring in, but uh, you know, it is still early. I'm just uh, exploring with the squad at the moment. But Phil Foden, in my opinion, and is also a really great player to, uh, to have so we're gonna give him some minutes hopefully next time for England on international duty so he's now been uh, not now called up and uh, yeah you know if any other players does well this season that hasn't been called up uh, we'll definitely give them a chance as well uh, for the national team but we have some games before that of course coming up in the league in the Champions League and everything uh, so that's gonna be very exciting but hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode in the next episode as you can see we've got Barcelona coming up as well in the Champions League so I'm really excited for that but that is all for now Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.